Borderlands 3 has a ton of amazing weapons and gear, and in this video I'm going to break down the best of the best for each category, from pistols to snipers, shields, artifacts, and every other item type. These are my 5 best in slot legendary items in Borderlands 3. Let's start things off with sniper rifles, since I haven't previously ranked those in this game, and I really, really like them right now. At number 5, the Lyuda. This Borderlands 2 Classic made its return to Borderlands 3 as a base game item that you could get by completing the Target of Opportunity quest from Zero, or you could get it from Tremendous Rex, the final boss of the Cistern of Slaughter, at a 50% drop chance. At launch, the Lyuda was absolutely ridiculous for damage because it had a bug that gave it an extra bullet with each shot, but the mag size was always problematic for most Vault Hunters. But since then, Gearbox has actually buffed this thing three times, dramatically increasing the weapon damage, reload speed, and even increasing the mag size by 150%, and honestly, this version of the Lyuda is quite a bit stronger than the Borderlands 2 version now, especially since you can get it in every element. You can also mitigate the ammo consumption on every single Vault Hunter. With Zane, you can use the clone active ammo regen anointment. With Moe's, just spec into your ammo regen skills. With Flak, you can use my Destroyer of Worlds build and keep your ammo strong by using it while in fadeaway. And with Amara, using Dread, you can refill your mag just by killing phase grassed enemies. Or conversely, just use a terror ammo anointment on any Vault Hunter and keep your ammo up non-stop. The Lyuda has had a long, strange journey in Borderlands 3, but it's absolutely amazing right now. Coming in at number 4 is the Boogeyman, yet another Vladov sniper rifle, and one that a lot of people considered a power crept Lyuda until the Lyuda was buffed. The Boogeyman actually has the amazing ability to do weapon element splash damage with its shots, and on kill has a small chance to spawn a Boogeyman skull that will seek out enemies and explode dealing non-elemental grenade damage. On top of that, this gun has a 60% chance to not even consume ammo. All of these add up to make this an absolutely amazing sniper rifle, edging out the amazing Lyuda just by a bit. In the hands of Moe's with splash perks this sniper is god tier even holding this in your hands jumping into iron bear and getting kills will also spawn boogeyman skulls making it even more ridiculous but honestly this thing is amazing on every single vault hunter the boogeyman is obtained in arms race from these chests as a world drop or from heavyweight harker the final boss at number three is another returning Borderlands 2 weapon, but as a different weapon type this time around, the Sandhawk. This doll sniper used to be a SMG on Borderlands 2 and was renowned as one of the strongest weapons in that game when paired with a B shield. In Borderlands 3, it's now a sniper, but it works pretty much the same as it used to, shooting out seven orbs that fly in the shape of a bird flapping its wings, but it no longer requires the B shield to be extremely strong. Now, these projectiles that it shoots move slower than typical sniper rounds, but they do deal elemental splash damage, making them extremely powerful. Powerful. It can spawn with any element, but cannot be non-elemental. A lot of people complain about the switch from SMG to Sniper for this one, but honestly, this gun is still a beast. Now, Gearbox did hit it with a bit of a nerf back in 2020, increasing the shot cost from 2 ammo to 3 ammo per shot and removing two of the projectiles, but they later did a global sniper buff of 20% that atoned for that just a smidge. The Sandhawk drops from Katagawa on Mayhem 6 and above, or from Scourge or Ananthema in the Guardian Takedown. And we're bringing it along now to number 2! And number two is one of my all-time favorite weapons in Borderlands history, the Skull Masher. This Jacob Sniper Rifle has appeared in every single Borderlands game so far, including Tales from the Borderlands. What makes this sniper so damn good is the projectile count and the ability for those projectiles to deal crazy good critical hit damage, land shots to an enemy's dome and watch their heads explode, or just use this thing like a shotgun, run right up on somebody and hip fire as fast as you can pull the trigger and melt them down. The Skull Masher has had two buffs since launch, one being that flat 20% buff for all snipers like I mentioned before, and the other being a 50% damage buff back in 2020. This gun drops from Ice to the Invincible in Skitter Mall Basin in DLC 2, the Guns Love and Tentacles DLC. And finally, here we are at number one! Finally, the best overall sniper in Borderlands 3 is almost certainly no surprise to anybody who has ever used it before, the Complex Root. This Malawan sniper requires a one second charge up and then it will shoot out a two round burst, which then spawns 13 additional bullets bouncing around in a zigzag pattern, dealing crazy damage to anything that it touches. The additional projectiles explode on impact or after a two second delay and deal weapon element splash damage. It will always spawn with a combination of two elements to switch between. I've often compared this gun to the 
Pimpernel and Borderlands 2, even though they're very different in what they do. Both, however, deal massive damage outside of their initial shot, and splash damage is crazy strong in Borderlands 3. This gun also benefited from the 20% sniper rifle buff and didn't even really need it, but it also had an additional buff in late 2020 that lowered its weapon charge time as well. The complex route, when paired with a splash damage perk, either on artifacts class mods or even with anointments, is capable of eliminating the entire screen of enemies, but be warned, it can also eliminate your vision and even put yourself in fight for your life. The complex route is obtainable in DLC 3, The Bounty of Blood, from Lanny Dixon in Ashfall Peaks at an impressive 33% drop chance. All right, up next, we have the top five best in slot pistols. And here we are at number five. The Beacon. This Malawan pistol shoots out energy orbs that deal splash damage in whatever element you have on the gun. Additionally, on reload, this gun releases a Nova of the weapon element that deals splash damage, and this Nova deals more damage the fewer bullets remaining in the mag when you reload. This gun is one of the most versatile, strong, and fun weapons on this list, and that's saying something since there's some amazing weapons on here. The Beacon can roll with any two elements, being a Malawan. This allows you to change on the fly in ways that a lot of other weapons can't. Obviously, this gun lends itself beautifully to Moe's and Amara, but I've enjoyed using this gun on Flack and Zane as a change of pace from my usual gear with them as well. The beacon drops from Jarek Logan in Blood Sudden Canyon on DLC 3, The Bounty of Blood, at a very solid 33% drop rate. Moving on to number four! Moving on to number four now, and the Tizzy takes this spot. The COV pistol is one of the overall most powerful weapons in the game, capable of ridiculous damage per second because of its combination of high damage and fire rate. This gun can also spawn in any element giving it maximum versatility as well. Basically, the longer you hold the trigger, the faster this gun will shoot. Every 6 bullet will ricochet, and every 12 bullet is amped and deals 70% bonus damage. There are two downsides to this gun, however. First, you can only obtain this gun from Arms Race, or the Diamond Loot Room from DLC 6 if you get super lucky. And secondly, this gun will eat your ammo like I eat jelly beans, and that's a lot. But with Moe's, you can mitigate some of the ammo consumption, and with Zane, you can use the Wild Clone as active ammo regen annoyance. Or, since we can now enable Bloody Harvest year-round, just turn that on and reroll this thing to have terror ammo regen and get yourself a grenade that applies terror to yourself. Boom! Infinite ammo tizzy. The tizzy can be obtained from the Hunker Bunker Room in Arms Race, which is located right here on your map. It can also be obtained randomly in that DLC as a world drop from vending machines or from the final boss, the Heavyweight Harker. And now we're down to number three! Sliding in at number 3 is the Unkempt Herald. This classic from Borderlands 2 returns in Borderlands 3 and is now even better than its predecessor. Even though you can't roll a double penetrating prefix on this gun in Borderlands 3, it doesn't actually matter. Any version of this gun you get is going to absolutely wreck enemies. Unlike the Borderlands 2 version, this one can now roll all of the elements or be non-elemental. When you shoot this gun, it fires off 3 gyro jets that will split into a row of 7 gyro jets that explode on impact, dealing splash damage in your gun's weapon element type. Now, don't be fooled by the item card. There's a times four version of this gun and it needs to be avoided at all costs as all it does is consume one extra ammo per shot without giving you any extra projectiles. This gun can spawn with splash anointments and those are very powerful with this weapon. At launch, this version of the Herald was good but not great, but a buff on June 6, 2021 gave this gun a 100% damage buff, propelling it to the top of the best pistols list and honestly making it even stronger than the Borderlands 2 version. You can farm the Herald from Caber Dowd and Blood Sun King Canyon on DLC 3, The Bounty of Blood, or it can world drop from other various named enemies or chests in that DLC. Uh, this one almost made it to number one, but it didn't, so it's number two. At number two on my list, and honestly my favorite overall pistol in the game, is the Light Show. Now even though it's my favorite pistol, I recognize that it's not the strongest overall, thus the second spot on this list. This Vladoff pistol shoots four bullets in a square pattern, that pattern will rotate clockwise while firing consuming just one ammo per shot. Using this gun for medium to close range, you can keep all those bullets on target and absolutely shred enemies. This gun can spawn in all of the elements or it can be non-elemental, giving it exceptional versatility. In the hands of Zane, this is one of the most enjoyable gameplay experiences I've ever had in any Borderlands game ever, running and gunning and just having a blast. But this gun is also great on every single Vault Hunter in nearly any situation. It's also extremely easy to farm, having one of the fastest farming routes of any gun on this list. You can get the Light Show as a dedicated drop from Laser Dactyl at 33% drop rate in the Obsidian Forest in DLC 3, The Bounty of Blood. And finally, here we are at number one! 
Surprising absolutely nobody at number one on this list is the Free Radical. This Malawan pistol might be locked to shock as the only elemental option, but don't let that fool you. This gun doesn't really care what enemies resist, and it will shred everything in sight. The Free Radical shoots out energy orbs that deal shock splash damage, and each enemy that is hit will spawn a homing bullet that only homes back in on the hit target. These homing bullets do not deal splash damage, but this creates a wild light show of bullets and splash damage that leaves everything on the screen dead in mere seconds. Probably the only weakness this weapon has is besides the element lock is that like all Malawans your first shot requires a little bit of a charge up but after that it's game over for literally everything on the screen. The free radical is arguably one of the strongest overall weapons in the game with a higher base damage than a lot of sniper rifles oddly enough. You can farm the free radical from Beef Pliskin and Karas Canyon on Pandora by doing the Ava murder mystery side quest in DLC 6 the director's cut. Now we have the top 5 best in slot shotguns. At number five, the Convergence. This shotgun is basically the conference call of Borderlands 3. Shooting an enemy will spawn multiple orbs around the enemy that penetrate the target, dealing exceptional damage. Obtainable from the Hag of Fervor and the True Trials version of the Trial of Fervor on Sky Drowned Pulpit at a 50% drop chance, or from its original source of Dr. Benedict in the Fantastic Fuster Cluck DLC, this gun is strong and fun, and it gives me that conference call nostalgia that I was missing in Borderlands 3, even though we have a conference call in this game it just sucks this gun is available in every element or even in a non-elemental version the shotgun has good fire rate accuracy and damage and it's just a fun weapon to use moving on to number four and number four the heartbreaker the heartbreaker is one of several weapons returning from borderlands 2 that's actually even better than its previous versions a moxie weapon the heartbreaker heals you for 20 percent of the damage you deal to enemies and this gun deals very good damage as well in borderlands 2 in the pre-sequel the heartbreaker only did two percent of damage as healing as a comparison. The Heartbreaker shoots in the shape of a heart and is available in every element except for radiation. During my shotgun's only flag playthrough, this weapon was instrumental in my survivability during the Hemavorous fight, but not only that, it was actually one of the stronger shotguns I had during that entire playthrough. Basically a shotgun version of the Grog Nozzle from Borderlands 2, but actually better for dealing damage. The Heartbreaker drops from Georgia's Armada in the Handsome Jackpot DLC. And now we're down to number three! At number three, the Anarchy. This TDR shotgun has the special ability of building damage as you get kills or even just by reloading it, which is a completely unintended bonus, by the way. This effect stacks 10 times in total and at max stacks, this gives you a staggering 1,379% weapon damage bonus. Now, if you swap weapons or inadvertently cancel your reload animation, however, those stacks will go away. This is obviously a reference to Gage and her Anarchy skill from Borderlands 2. You can tell that the gun is is currently under the effects of the damage bonus via this red glow around the gun, but there's no way to see how many stacks you have at a given time. One thing you can do is pre-stack this gun when you enter an area by using a vending machine to reload your ammo. Simply shoot and throw reload 10 times to build up max stacks, then click the refill ammo button on the vendor. You'll have a fully loaded murder machine. Bonus features for this beautiful beast are that you can roll splash damage annoyments on this and all of your projectiles actually deal weapon element splash damage. You can also roll this gun with up to 20 20 projectiles per shot, which only costs two ammo per shot, giving you some serious bang for your buck. The Anarchy can roll with any of the elements or also be non-elemental. There's only an 8.2% chance to get a particular element, however, so expect to farm this for a bit to get a perfect one. The Anarchy drops from Kukawajak and Negel Nashai on Xylorgos in the Guns, Love, and Tentacles DLC. And here we are at number two! At number two, the Hellwalker. Now, I know I ranked this gun higher than the number one shotgun on my best base game weapons video, but I'm allowed to change my mind over time, okay? The Hellwalker does still remain one of my all-around favorite weapons in all of Borderlands history, and I use one on pretty much every one of my Vault Hunters. Just being able to pop enemy heads with one close-range blast is, well, a blast. Few things are more satisfying to me than running around mobbing with this gun. Obtainable from Road Dog and Splinterlands on Pandora, the Hellwalker is always locked to incendiary damage. Damage. This gun has fixed parts, so no matter how many times you farm it, it's always going to have the exact same stats at max level. Getting one of these as a world drop early on in story mode will likely hold you for 20 plus levels. The Hellwalker remains one of the coolest weapons that you will ever find in any Borderlands game ever. And finally, here we are at number one! 
Finally, at number one is a shotgun that has had quite the transformation since launch. In the first month of Borderlands 3's release, Moe's mains were using this gun like a laser beam of death, melting everything in sight. Sadly, this lack of diversity in gear led Gearbox to smacking this gun with a nerf, which reduced its damage by 25% and made it crazy and accurate. Basically, you'd pull the trigger and the next thing you knew, like an instant later, you were staring at the sky. Eventually, they fixed the wild accuracy issues, but for a long portion of the game's life, this gun became basically worthless, doing less damage than a former pearlescent weapon should. That all changed on the 10th of June of 2021 when Gearbox gave this gun an 83.3% weapon damage buff and increased the gun's special effect for ammo regen. This essentially made it even better than it was at launch. To make matters even better, you can obtain this gun via ludograms that you get by killing Dinklebot on Skywell 27. Each ludogram has a 25% chance to turn into a butcher, so you can literally spend 10 to 15 minutes farming Dinklebot and then go turn in 20 ludograms and you're pretty much guaranteed to get a butcher. This gun is amazing and it makes me long for the days where we had pearlescence because this thing is deserving of being a pearlescent in Borderlands 3. Now we got the top five best in slot assault rifles. And here we are at number five. Sliding in at number five is the Rowan's Call. This full auto Jacobs assault rifle has the unique ability of regening your ammo while you hit crits and also still ricocheting orbs at the nearest enemy that do weapon element splash damage. You talk about a weapon that's very rewarding for accuracy and this is it. Landing crits and keeping the ammo up nonstop while doing insane damage to the enemy you're shooting and everybody around them is insanely fun. At launch, this weapon was decent, but it wasn't until the June 10th, 2021 update where they increased its damage by three hundred percent at which point this gun became one of the best overall weapons in the game for every single character Moe's loves it for the splash crits ties the binomara loves it for how crazy it is with indiscriminate zane loves it because it goes burr and flack absolutely loves it because of crits guaranteed to be one of the most fun weapons you'll ever use in a borderlands game provided that you are at least somewhat accurate moving on to number four Speaking of fun weapons to use, the OPQ system is a legendary version of the popular Q system assault rifle introduced with the Cartels event. This weapon quickly became one of the most popular weapons in the game. The special ability of this gun is that it occasionally does shock splash damage. Also, while in the alternate firing mode, it can deploy a drone of itself to fight alongside you while you have it in your hand, targeting any enemy that you look at. That drone also does shock splash damage. This gun is so strong that even when the Cartels event ended and the level cap was increased people were still using this gun on higher levels and doing more damage than most other non-legendary weapons eventually gearbox made the cartels and other seasonal events permanent allowing us to now get this at max level and now we're down to number Three. The newest assault rifle in Borderlands 3, introduced with Vault Card 3 from the Director's Cut, the Blade Fury is absolutely insane. Doing both bullet damage as well as melee damage, since it shoots out knives, this gun is like a combination of the Face Puncher and the Clairvoyance. And much like the Clairvoyance, you can get this one in a Masher variant to have four projectiles at just two ammo per shot. Or if you fancy it, get yourself a Gatlin version so you can shoot this thing full auto. Either way, this gun is crazy because in addition to everything I just said, this gun can also bypass certain boss immune phases as you can see right here so grind yourself some vault card xp and go get this gun you absolutely will not regret it and here we are at number two even though the Soul Render comes in at number two on this list, it's actually my favorite assault rifle in the game and one of my favorite weapons in Borderlands history. This gun shoots standard bullets, but it also occasionally launches skulls that do 20 times the base damage of the gun as splash damage. So on Mayhem 11, this thing is outputting some stupid numbers. These skulls will also auto track enemies for you, meaning this gun is ideal for anybody with bad aim, you know, in case you know anybody like that. I cannot stress enough just how much I love this gun on every single of Vault Hunter in nearly every situation. Go farm Tom and Zam in the Heart's Desire map in the Guns, Love, and Tentacles DLC to get yourself one. Focus on getting the highest base damage you can find, but also make sure it's a full auto version. And finally, here we are at number one! Finally, at number one is probably no surprise to anybody who's ever used it, the Monarch. Now, a common misconception about this gun is it's only for flak, and while flak does indeed get the best use out of it, it's still extremely strong in the hands of every single Vault Hunter. That said, a clone Zane with double barrel will want to avoid this one since that clone won't swap to the alternate firing mode, and that's where the damage really comes from on this gun. In bipod mode, you cannot jump, run, or slide, but you can melt enemy health bars lightning fast. It's also super easy to farm 
dropping from kilovolt and electricity on promethea while playing on mayhem six or higher that said getting a god roll is still a challenge as is just getting a good one with the element that you want but this gun is 100 worth the effort and here's the top five best in slot smgs and here we are at number five at number five is the Blood Starved Beast. This doll SMG is one of the most entertaining gunplay experiences in the entire game for me. Shooting orbs that penetrate enemies and deal elemental splash damage, a high fire rate, a high mag size, and the ability to be full auto makes this gun just an absolute blast to use. This is one that is solid on all four Vault Hunters regardless of the build that you're using, but it's absolutely lethal in the hands of Amara or Moe's with the splash damage bonuses that you can get out of both the gun and their builds. Add to that that you can get this gun in any element and it can roll in a times three version for even more damage per shot and you can start to see why I rank this one so highly. The only real downside to this gun is that you have to kill Evil Lilith in DLC 4 to get it and that's one of the more annoying farms in all of Borderlands 3. That said, it is absolutely worth the work. Moving on to number four! Popping up at number four is the DNA. This Mayhem 6 exclusive is only obtainable from General Trot on Desolation's Edge on Necker Tefeo or from Scourge or Anathema in the Guardian Takedown, but it's extremely easy to farm from Trot, so go for it there. This gun received a buff in January of 2021, increasing the damage by 166%, while also increasing the fire rate, reload speed, mag size, and projectile speed. These changes made this gun one of the absolute best all-around weapons in the game, much less just an SMG, and hurtled it from my worst legendary items list to number three on my old best SMGs list in a matter of just weeks. The DNA shoots out two orbs that split off in different directions with an elemental energy blade held between them. Each shot has a random element. The gun now absolutely shreds on every Vault Hunter, and being a base game item, that means that even if you don't own any of the DLC of this game, you can still get this gun in random everything in the game and now we're down to number three jumping into the list way up here at number three is the needle gun now speaking of smgs that were previously horrible and now dominate the needle gun received a huge 200 weapon damage buff back on june 24th 2021 bumping it from laughing stock to one of the most coveted smgs that you can get another knock on this gun had been that you could only obtain it during the cartel event which only came around once per year but gearbox recently made the cartels bloody harvest and broken hearts events all permanent and free to everybody who owns the game essentially making this the best base game SMG, just above the aforementioned DNA. The needle gun has several really cool features. Continuous firing will increase the fire rate. It shoots slow homing needles that apply debuff that stacks up to 10 times. Enemies need to be hit at least once every two seconds or the debuff resets. The magazine refills each time you apply the 10th stack to an enemy. And when you throw reload this thing, since it's a TDR, it will home in on enemies and explode. Now, the TDR part of this thing is not really that important because TDR's got a overall nerf way back in January of this year and I kind of want them to undo that nerf. I really hope that one day they'll just say you know what that nerf was not necessary and then we bring it back but it is what it is. You can get this gun in all the elements or non-elemental and the easiest way to farm this is to follow the guide that I will post on the screen right here in the corner and that is my cartel farming guide. Essentially you can get this from Joey Ultraviolet, Josie Bite, or Franco firewall what you want to do is you want to try and get josie bite and franco firewall in that final room with joey ultraviolet if you can do that then you can kill the two of them over and over leave joey alive and just respawn without killing joey and you can keep farming josie and franco over and over until you get this thing to drop and as strong as this gun is it is absolutely worth multiple runs through the cartels which honestly is my favorite map anyhow this one almost made it to number one, but it didn't, so it's number two. At number two is the Flipper. This Metal One SMG, lots of those on this list again, deals full splash damage and gains increasing projectiles the longer you shoot. It goes from one to three to five to seven, up to nine projectiles all at once. This means after the first few shots, you will continuously shoot nine projectiles all at once for the remainder of your mag. This makes this an absolute killing machine. Another great thing about the flipper is that you have a 30% chance to get it from men 
Venusaur in DLC 3, the Bounty of Blood. So that gives you a super easy farm to get this murder machine, and it is available in all the elements. This thing with a Minesweeper on Moe's is just an absolute destroyer. In the hands of Amara, this thing, because of the elemental damage and the splash damage you get, is a beast. In the hands of Flak, who will hit this thing on crits non-stop, this thing shreds. In the hands of Zane, this thing is just amazing. You can't go wrong with the Flipper. It's one of my favorite all-around guns in all of Borderlands history. And before the number one SMG was added into this game, the Flipper was hands down the most sought after SMG out there. And it's still one of the best all-around weapons in the game. And finally, here we are at number one. Finally, coming in at number one is absolutely no surprise to anybody who has ever used this gun before the plasma coil. This gun was introduced with DLC 5, the Arms Race DLC, which is also known as the Designer's Cut. It can drop from any enemy, the chests, or the vendors in the Arms Race, and it is an absolute beast of a weapon. This Malin 1 SMG starts off slow, but it absolutely melts, and it doesn't even care if you're matching elements properly. And honestly, that's about the only knock on this gun. It's locked to radiation and shock, but like I said, using either of those, it's still going to tear up every bit of content in the game. If you've ever had a problem completing any of the content, then farm yourself up a plasma coil and go try it again you will not regret it now to our final weapon type and this is generally my least favorite weapon type in all video games however after doing a launchers only flak play through a little while back i did learn to love them just a little bit so here's my top five best in slot launchers number five at number five and this might be a controversial take but this is my pick so i'm going with it the yellow cake while it was somewhat nerfed a little while back this launcher is still very capable of massive amounts of damage it is locked to radiation as the only elemental option but this launcher fires energy orbs and arcing trajectories that explode on impact and deal radiation splash damage which is extremely strong in this game the orbs split into two at a set distance and then those orbs will in turn also split maxing out at eight orbs total if you get the more prefix on this launcher so finding that range to use this thing at is the key to maximizing the overall damage the yellow kick can be obtained by enabling the cartels event in the main menu and then killing either tyrone smallums fish slap or joey ultraviolet Moving on to number four. coming in at number four is the hive this launcher returns from borderlands 2 where it was well known for its ability to swap with the lady fist to do stupid damage well that trick returns in borderlands 3 but using the unforgiven instead basically you shoot this launcher and then swap immediately to the unforgiven pistol and each of the hive projectiles that land crits will deal massively increased damage, making this especially strong for Flax with Megavore as that will make every single shot that hits a critical hit. The hive can drop in either radiation or corrosive in this game, while in Borderlands 2 it was always locked to corrosive only. The hive drops from Princess Tarantella the second in the Splinterlands on Pandora. At number three on this list is the Plague Bear, and while I understand that a lot of players would rank this at number one or two, for me, the charge time is too annoying. But I recognize the power of this launcher and how you can shoot it near a crowd of enemies. It'll track them down, destroy them. I get that. It's just not what I like in a launcher. Too slow, too boring, but very, very strong. The Plague Bear drops from the Warden in Anvil on Eden 6, on Mayhem 6 or higher, and it can also drop from Scourge and Ananthema in the Guardian Takedown. And number two is probably the strongest single target launcher on this list, the Kick Charger. Now, I'd rank this thing at number one if we we're talking pure boss destroyers, but I like launchers that can do it all. Like I said, the Kick Charger can be extremely fun, even for mobbing, if you can mitigate the ammo consumption. It's available in every single element. This launcher is extremely versatile. Now, for the major downside for a lot of people, however, to get this launcher, you do have to farm this chest in arms race or hope that the heavyweight Harker drops it. It's only a 6.25% chance to drop from the chest and only a 4.2% chance to drop from Harker, making this an absolute nightmare farm, which is yet another reason why my number one pick is... And finally, here we are at number one! The Backburner. This launcher is another Mayhem 6 and higher exclusive, dropping from the Agonizer in the Guts of Carnivore map on Pandora at a 6.9% drop chance. That's right, less than 10%. You can, however, also obtain this by doing the True Trials Instinct map, where it actually has a 50% drop chance from the Tyrant of Instinct. Make sure you flick the switch to enable True Trials difficulty when you do the Trial of Instinct to make this happen. Additionally, like all Mayhem 6 and above exclusives, it can also drop from Ananthema 
uh, or Scourge and the Guardian take down, but I definitely recommend farming the Tyrant of Instinct as you can often get as many as two in a single run. Now, what makes the back burner my favorite is that it shoots out an energy orb in a straight line, creates a singularity that pulls in nearby enemies, explodes on impact dealing weapon element splash damage, and then five more smaller orbs erupt out of the impact area and explode on impact dealing even more weapon element splash damage, with the final orb dealing the most damage of them all. An extremely fun launcher that's amazing on every single Vault Hunter. It's also the launcher I used on my launcher flak playthrough to obliterate many of the raid bosses, most notably this insanity that I did to Hemovorus the Invincible. Extremely easy to get, extremely strong, extremely fun, this launcher friggin' rocks. For the top five legendary grenades in Borderlands 3, I'm going to base my opinion on a variety of factors, with the most important being their utility, as that's what grenades are in this game. And number five, the Ghast Call. This Merv grenade is locked to corrosive element and it's unable to spawn with an anointment. The Ghast Call is a crazy strong grenade and it's all sorts of fun. Basically, throwing this thing will send out a skull towards your enemies, dealing a corrosive explosion on impact, which then spawns three additional homing skulls that chase down enemies. While under effects of terror, it will actually send out even more skulls. This grenade drops from Captain Haunt or Loot Ghost by enabling the Bloody Harvest in the main menu. Moving on to number four. And number four is the fish slap. Anybody that's ever used this thing with a melee build knows how crazy this thing can be. This fish shaped grenade deals melee damage to any enemy that it hits. It bounces around like a rubberized grenade exploding on impact. Pair this thing with any kind of melee build and you are going to destroy enemies really fast. It can be obtained by enabling the cartels event in the main menu and then killing either Tyrone Smallums, fish slap or Joey Ultraviolet. Number and number three, the Hunter Seeker. Now this grenade is especially great if you're pairing it with the Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge because this thing is a grenade that shoots bullets at enemies as it flies around. And it moves really slow, which might seem kind of ineffective, but that's actually really great for this because as it's hitting enemies, it is actually stacking up your stacks on your Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge, which allows you to do even more damage. Now, if you can find a Matosis Hunter Seeker, then you've got a God tier grenade that is great for stacking up your damage with the Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge. The only trick is to to farm the Hunter Seeker, you have to go to the Anvil on Eden 6 and farm the dragons there. And only Dredge and Rage have a chance to drop this, each with a 15% drop chance. And getting a Matosis version is really complicated because you need a right roll of parts for that to happen. So honestly, take any of the Hunter Seekers you can find. But if you can find a Matosis one, then you're golden. And number two, the Hex Grenade. Now, a lot of people have this misconception that the Hex Grenade got nerfed into oblivion, and that's just not true. While it's definitely not as crazy broken as it was at launch, it's still extremely strong, great for Moe's, great for Amara, great for Zane, great for Flak. I have one of these on basically every single one of my characters. Like the Hunter Seeker, it can be used to constantly buff your Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge. It can also be used to rip enemy shields if you have one that does shock damage. This grenade is just great. Now, is it going going to absolutely melt enemies health bars probably not but it will do a big chunk of damage off them and that's what a grenade is supposed to do in this game the hex grenade still remains one of my favorite grenades in borderlands 3 the hex grenade drops from the sky boys in the anvil on eden 6 and finally here we are at number one finally at number one it's piss now this grenade is not your typical borderlands grenade this grenade actually is used to debuff enemies and also to wipe away elemental status effects from yourself and your teammates if you're on fire throw this thing at your feet it puts the fire out conversely throw this at an enemy and all of a sudden they take a lot more damage from you the piss grenade actually debuffs enemies in a way that they take 20 percent increased damage from all sources now the only status effect that it does not cleanse on players is is freeze and that kind of sucks but it does also make sense if you're frozen and you threw piss on yourself you're just going to be covered in frozen piss the piss grenade drops from sloth and conrad's hold on pandora at a 15 percent drop chance now let's take a look at my top five shields now there are so many good shields in this game that it was really hard for me to narrow it down so i went with the five shields that i feel are like the most versatile for everybody Starting off at number five with the Super Soldier Shield. While this shield is full, you get 50% fire rate, 25% movement speed, and 5% ammo regen. All of these are great skills that benefit every single Vault Hunter. Now, when your shield refills itself, you gain a protective barrier for five seconds that makes you invulnerable. That alone is a really great skill, but when you pair it with the other effects, like I said, this thing becomes amazing. Now, to get to this shield, that is the complicated part. You do need to have the Fallen Heroes Vault Card, and you need to spend your Vault Card keys 
in order to unlock this thing. That said, even after the first unlock, you're going to have to redo that again. You're going to have to unlock it a second time in order to get an anointment on this thing. So that is kind of a pain in the butt. And that's the only reason that I rank it lower than the next item on the list. Moving on to number four. The stopgap at number four. Now, what makes the stopgap so good is that on shield break, you become immune to all damage for five seconds. Now you pair this with an action skill start anointment and you can constantly trigger that immunity. However, make sure that you do let your shield recharge back to full before you trigger that again. Basically on every single character where you can trigger your action skill quickly, I'm looking at Zane, Flack, and Amara especially, you can have constant invulnerability. To get the stopgap, you must farm L Dragon Jr. and he has a 15% drop chance. He is located on Eden 6 in the Jacobs Estate. However, the stopgap can world drop and you can also find it in vending machines. Coming in at number three is the Infernal Wish. This legendary shield has the ability that while the shield is active, you gain one extra projectile to your weapon shots. This makes this extremely strong for launchers and snipers, so you can basically double the damage on high damage items. This was the shield that I mostly used when I did my launchers only flak playthrough, so I could constantly have those non-stop extra projectiles with each of my launcher shots. Now the trick to this shield is that firing your weapon has a chance to trigger self-combustion, and this will deal continuous non-elemental damage to your your character even though you would think that you would be on fire while that self combustion is active each shot has a chance to stack infernal stacks which each infernal stack will increase the damage of self combustion meaning that you can basically down yourself pretty quick if you're not careful now all of those stacks will reset themselves when you get a second win however but if you don't let your shield deplete then you should be golden so any kind of skills that you got where you can keep your shield going non-stop i'm looking at you mo's and i'm looking at you flack this shield is really fun the only other problem with the infernal wish and the reason i didn't rank it two instead of three is that you have to get it from the arms race dlc it has an 8.3 percent chance to drop from these chests or a 4.2 percent chance to drop from heavyweight harker and we're bringing it along now to number two Coming in at number two, the Old God Shield. Now this shield drops from DLC 2, the Guns, Love, and Tentacles DLC, and it can drop from any of the named enemies in that DLC, but it has a higher chance to drop from Eleanor of the Heart, the final boss in that DLC. And even then it's only a 15% drop chance. So it's still kind of tricky to get the right one that you want. Now what this shield does is it gives you a constant 25% elemental damage resistance, but it'll also do 20% of your shield element damage. So if you get one that has fire the element on it you will deal 20 percent extra fire damage making this an exceptional shield for mo's mains especially if you're pairing it with fire in the skag den as that's just going to massively increase all of your damage across the board in addition to all that it's just a really good shield all around you can get this thing with double absorb as well so that you can constantly absorb ammo at the same rate that you would on a transformer shield for example and finally here we are at number one Finally, coming in at number one on the shields is the Revolter. This is probably no big surprise. Anybody who's ever used the B shield back in Borderlands 2 will have a pretty good idea of how the Revolter works. Essentially, when your shield breaks, the Revolter kicks in and you're going to deal massive amounts of damage. You also gain a 50% fire rate bonus. The damage increase is 200% bonus shock damage. And I know that it sounds like, you know, it's not going to be so strong because it's locked to shock damage, but trust me, it gets crazy. Now, this also works with your action skills, your melee your grenades everything anything that you use to deal damage is going to pair with the revolter so if you're Mara and you cast out phase cast while your revolter is active you're going to do 200 increased bonus shock damage if you're mose and you send out iron cub and you trigger your revolter iron cub is going to do 200 bonus shock damage so as you can see this thing is crazy strong i'm not sure why it needed to be this strong but it's definitely stronger than the b shield on borderlands 2 i still to this day have people say i really wish that they had the b shield in borderlands 3 and i always have to tell them we have something stronger than the b shield in borderlands 3 and you can trigger it anytime you want by having an action skill start anointment on them now in order to get the shield you do need to kill sumo in echelon row on promethea during the ava murder mysteries it is a astonishingly high 30 percent drop chance as well all right on to class mods and for class mods i'm just going to quickly cover the best ones without really ranking them as the ranking depends very heavily on what you're trying to do with your character and your build 
For Zane, the five class mods that I most commonly use are the Antifreeze, the Spy, the Executor, the Hustler, and with the best of the bunch, in my opinion, being the CN Dead from DLC 1, the Handsome Jackpot, which can drop from basically anybody in that DLC, but I've gotten as many as five in a single run from the Handsome Jackpot himself. The cool thing about the CN Dead class mod is that it keeps your action skills going pretty much non-stop as long as you're shooting enemies. For Moe's, my top five class mods are the Sapper to keep your health going, Blood Letter to give yourself massive shield, Flare to do more damage while an Iron Bear, Blastmaster to just keep your splash damage high all the time, and with Minesweeper being my most used, especially for big boss fights, because you're going to get a lot of extra bonus damage on weapons that you do lots of crits with, especially the Flipper and the Tizzy. Those are my two favorite for maximizing the Minesweeper damage. For Amara, my top five class mods are the Death's Blessing to do extra orb damage, Kinzei, Muse, Spiritual Driver for running and gunning, and Phase Zerker being my all around top choice as I prefer using Phase Grasp on most of my Amara builds and this keeps that going pretty good. Finally for Flak, my top five class mods are the Cosmic Stalker, that's just a great all around class mod for Flak. Peregrine, which is great for pairing with your rack attacks and especially if you're using the aforementioned Fish Slap Grenade. The Red Fang, which is great for basically making enemies completely ignore you. It's the absolute perfect class mod for when you're doing crystals and guardian takedown you just have the red fang on send out your pet nothing attacks you at all stack bot being my second ranked one which is extremely strong you basically just keep your damage going non-stop it pairs really well with that grenade i talked about earlier the hunter seeker and then my top class mod for flak being the bounty hunter because it was recently discovered that this thing has all kinds of extra bonuses when you're using it on any enemy type and it's probably my most commonly used class mod on flak and it's a base game class mod as well finally for my top five artifacts i feel this one's fairly subjective but these are arguably the best of the best for most players the schluter obviously is great for basically shooting an enemy and killing it and then popping open a chest to get lots of legendaries or if you see what i do here in this video i can actually bring my car over here shoot my car pop open a chest and the car counts as a kill you'll know that the schluter is active because the sides of your screen turn green now on my zane i almost exclusively use a victory rush and the cool thing about the victory rush like a lot of other artifacts is it can also have a lot of variety in the prefix you can get a snowdrift victory rush you can get the icebreaker victory rush which is my main one on zane there's a lot of other options as well the victory rush basically keeps you moving fast keeps you dealing massive amounts of damage now my third ranked one is the toboggan this one does what a snowdrift artifact does but it also gives you some other perks chief among those perks is that while you slide you generate a shield that reduces incoming damage by 50 percent and then when you come out of your slide you will consume that shield for an additional 100% amp damage. You pair this with a revolter, you pair this with a bunch of other things, you can do some stupid stuff. Pairing a toboggan with a kick charger and a revolter is just insane. Then coming into number two, the Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge. I know that this one is like most people's favorite thing, but my problem with the Pearl of Ineffable Knowledge is you can't really farm it. You get one of these for completing the mission and getting it from Claptrap when doing the Guns, Love, and Tentacles DLC, and you can't get another one without playing through everything again so you might end up with some terrible passive stats on it that said even if you get like a low level one and the passive stats are terrible what this thing does is actually really cool basically anytime you hit an enemy in fast succession you gain one percent multiplicative damage that stacks up to 15 times then when you reach 15 stacks you gain an additional 90 percent gun damage so this means overall you're going to get over 100 percent gun damage just by stacking this thing up and like i talked about before you can use a lot of different things you can use damage over time you can use your hunter seeker there's a lot of different things that you can use to keep this thing stacked up but my overall best all-around artifact is the new one that came out with dlc 6 the director's cut the company man being able to boost things like fire rate crit damage regular damage reload speed or a lot of different other options for a specific class of weapon is extremely powerful the pearl is a close second for me on this one though but the company man is just so damn good you can get you know obviously every single manufacturer atlas Jacobs, Malawan, Torg, etc. And getting one that has 50% damage, 50% mag size, 50% crit damage is just absolutely insane. So there you have it. That is my top five best in slot for each type of item in Borderlands 3. I hope this guide is helpful to you guys. It's going to be something that you guys can refer back to at any point in time if you need to know what some of the best guns and items in the game are. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, hit subscribe, tap the bell icon for more. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.